Greetings students and welcome to my second video on tensor calculus. In this lesson I'm going to continue the previous video and talk more about the definition of tensors and about the differences between tensors and matrices. If you recall the previous video I left off with this definition of the tensor, but I didn't really talk about the transformation rules in this definition. In this video I'm going to talk about those transformation rules in more detail. Now there's actually two ways to describe the transformation rules of tensors. The first way is probably the most famous one that physicists love to use, which says that a tensor is a mathematical object that transforms like a tensor. The second and probably the most helpful way is that a tensor is an object that is invariant, i.e. it does not change, under a change of coordinate systems. But when we do change the coordinate system, the components of that tensor must change according to a special set of mathematical rules. Now, the first way to describe transformation rules is pretty bad. It's ridiculously vague and terrible for beginners. That's why we're going to use the second way to describe transformation rules for tensors, that tensors are invariant under a change of coordinate systems. And in order to do that, let's go back to the tensors that we discussed in the previous video. We'll begin by looking at the temperature in New York. If my coordinate system starts out like this with coordinates x, y, and z, and if I change the coordinates to get a new system with x prime, y prime, and z prime, then will the change in coordinate systems change the temperature? Of course not. Temperature is a scalar, so it's obviously going to be completely separate from our coordinate system. No matter what coordinate system we use to measure position, the temperature in New York will stay the same, whether I have this primed coordinate system, the old coordinate system, or any other coordinate system. The temperature will be invariant when we change coordinates. Let's go to our displacement vector. Recall that this vector represented the displacement from the JFK airport, point A, to the Empire State Building, point B. Now, I originally drew my XYZ coordinate system like this, which meant that the displacement vector could be described as the sum of three components, negative 19i plus 12j plus 0.45k. But what happens if I change my coordinate system to x prime, y prime, and z prime like this? Well, my displacement in the new coordinate system will change. It'll become more like 22.4i prime plus 0j prime minus 0.45k prime, where i prime, j prime, and k prime are the unit vectors in the new primed coordinates. So changing the coordinates does change the way that I end up writing the vector, but does it change the vector itself? Well, no, the vector still points from A to B even under this coordinate change. In fact, no matter what new coordinate system we adopt, the vector will continue to point from A to B. The vector itself will not change under a coordinate transformation. So if I change my coordinate system, if I change the way my axes are oriented, that's not going to change the fact that the vector points from A to B. A and B are still fixed where they are no matter how I rotate or translate my axes. So it would be accurate to say that the vector is invariant when we change coordinate systems. It does not change when we change coordinates. Again, a coordinate transformation does change the way we write the vector in the new coordinate system, but it does not change the vector itself. Let's go now to our stress tensor, our rank 2 tensor. This stress tensor has to do with the stresses that act on the steel beam and cause it to deform in certain ways. Now last time I used the XYZ coordinate system to write an expression for the stress tensor P. Suppose now that this time I make a new X prime, Y prime, Z prime coordinate system and the expression for my stress tensor now becomes P prime. Now the question is, if my stress tensor P, if my old stress tensor P deforms the beam in a certain way, will my new stress tensor P prime under the different coordinate system deform the beam differently? No, of course not, because the deforming forces that are being exerted on the various surfaces inside the beam don't change the way they deform the beam when you transform the coordinate system. In fact, the change in coordinates has nothing to do with how the beam deforms, they're completely unrelated to each other. 
the manner by which I write those forces, the manner by which I represent the stress tensor and its component, that will change, but the stress tensor itself will intrinsically remain the same in terms of how it acts on the beam. So once again, a change of coordinates does not change my stress tensor. Okay, so how can we intuitively picture what happens to a tensor when we change coordinate systems? Well, recall that in the last video I talked about how in order to fully specify a component of a rank N tensor, you need to specify the magnitude of that component, as well as the N basis vectors corresponding to that component. You can, of course, then repeat this process for all the components of the tensor to fully specify the whole tensor. Now what happens if I apply a coordinate transformation given by some operator L to some random tensor? Well, the magnitude of the tensor components will then transform according to the operator L, whereas the basis vectors will transform according to L inverse. So in the end, what ends up happening is that when you specify the tensor in the new coordinate system, you once again combine the magnitude of the components, transformed by L, and the basis vectors, transformed by L inverse. And when you combine them, the effects of L and L inverse end up cancelling, and the full tensor that you end up with in the new coordinate system is the same as the tensor you had in the old coordinate system. So this is just a way to intuitively picture what happens to a tensor during a coordinate transformation. Its components change, but its basis vectors change in an opposite fashion, so the tensor ends up remaining the same as it was before the change in coordinate system. Just some quick notes on tensors versus matrices. I said in the last video that you can use matrices to represent rank 2 tensors. Remember, matrices are just collections of numbers packaged inside brackets. When I specify a matrix, I can just write down the matrix and its elements. I don't have to add anything on top of that. But when I specify a tensor, I can't just write down A, B, C, D and be done with it. I need to specify the coordinate system, the components, and the basis vectors that each of those components correspond to. So in that sense, a tensor is much more than a matrix. A tensor requires more detailed specification, and it also has these transformation properties where it's invariant under a change of coordinate systems. It has physical significance. A matrix, however, is not defined according to these properties. It's just a collection of numbers. Anyway, that should do it for the lesson. I didn't really go too much into the mathematical formulas for tensor transformation, because in order to do that, I need to talk about Einstein notation first, and that's what I'll do in the next video. I'd like to thank the following patrons for supporting me at the $5 level or higher. I've linked my social media pages in the description for you to check out. And if you enjoyed the video, feel free to like and subscribe. This is the Faculty of Khan, signing out.